Hello and welcome to Wednesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and another build your own puzzle, uh, this time from the pen of the marvellous Joseph Nemer, uh, whose Sudoku is basically always a joy. So we should be in for a treat today. Um, now, but of course, the big news today is not even about Joseph's puzzle. It's, it's that Marge is homing in on her inheritance. And if you've not followed the story so far, let me bring you up to date. Basically, Marge uh, received this puzzle from her grandfather in his will. Um, now, if you solve this puzzle correctly and you interpret what's going on in the sort of uh, in the calligraphy, let's call it the calligraphy around the edge of the grid, you might see an, uh, there's an R here and that looks a bit like an E. And could that be a B? Yeah, and there's R, A, that might be an N look. Maybe that's a D, that an L and a Y. If you, if you manage to figure all this out and solve the puzzle, it takes you to a video of the late great old man uh, who left Marge the, uh, the Sudoku um, talking about how he wants her to find his real inheritance. And that's led Marge on something of a puzzle hunt. Um, if you're over on our Discord, you'll be well aware of what's going on. There's an awful lot of activity over there. And if you are stuck on what to do next, do go over to Discord where you'll find lots and lots of people who can help you. Um, but I, I believe that today is the big day where Marge might finally find out what the real treasure is. Um, what will it be? Will it be better than the Ferrari she was hoping for? I don't know. This show is not sponsored by Ferrari, by the way. Anyway, that's 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 for this afternoon stroke evening. Uh, I'm also delighted to tell you, of course, we're honing in on the 1st of May. And on the 1st of May, if you're a patron of the channel, we are releasing an absolutely wonderful uh, puzzle stroke Sudoku hunt by Matthias Martinka. It is exceptionally high quality. And um, the first correct solution we received to that will win some of our new merchandise. So... Uh, if for no other reason, do have a go at that. Um, and anyone who solves the whole thing will get a shout out on the channel. So we're really looking forward to, to seeing what the feedback's like for that. Now, with all that said, let me read you the rules of Joseph's puzzle, which is called Building the Unknown. What we have got today is normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, digits in a cage sum to the total indicated in the top left corner of the cage. Well, yeah, that's fine, but there are no there are no totals. Um, digits cannot repeat inside cages. The cages all have the same total, which should be deduced by the solver. The killer cages themselves must be deduced and drawn by the solver. Oh, good grief. OK, so what we've got to do here is to build our own killer cages. Um, the cages can have any shape. The dotted squares in the grid show where the total of the cages where the totals of the cages are located. Good grief, I should have read these rules before I started this video. But what this, I think, is saying is that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There are 10 killer cages to find in this grid. And the totals for these killer cages would always appear in a cell that contains one of these one cell cages. OK, um, and all the cages have the same total. And you can't repeat digits in a cage. Um, and it says, note, the killer cage total must always appear in the upper left corner of a cage, topmost prioritized over leftmost. So that means that, for example, if you were trying to build this cage, this cell could never be part of this cage. Because if it was, if this cell was in this cage, this would be the upper left handmost cell. So in theory, therefore, this square should have had the, the cage around it so we could we can deduce from that things like this can't be in this one's cage this can't be in this one's cage etc uh, cages may not overlap thank goodness um, clues outside the grid show the sum of all the digits that are inside killer cages in that row or column good lord right okay so for example, we can deduce using the secret, which I will tell you about in a moment, that an awful lot of the real estate in row four is in cages. Um, anyway, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. I like Joseph's puzzle, so I'm looking forward to this one. Let's get cracking. Um, so, yeah, by the way, what I was thinking in terms of the secret, the secret, of course, is that in any correct uh, row or complete row or column or box of a Sudoku, you'll find all of the digits from one to nine. So um, 
add up the digits 1 to 9, you get 45, which is very much the sort of magic number for Sudoku. Uh, now, in this row, cells totaling 43 occupy cages. So exactly one cell in this row is not in a cage, and that cell must contain a 2. The only other thing we could have thought might be possible is to have seven cells in cages, but that would mean the two cells outside would have to have both been one, which is obviously impossible because you can't put double one in a row of stoku. So I don't really know what this means, but it means that most of this row is... Uh, actually, that does actually make me wonder about this domino at the start of the start of the row. Because the only, the only cage that these two cells can belong to... Oh no, maybe that one as well. Yeah, okay, sorry, I don't know. I was thinking maybe I would... Maybe... I know one of these must be in a cage at least. And that's going to... Because, because I can't have both of them outside cages or the 43 will break. So whatever's in a cage down here either belongs to that one or that one. Oh no, hang on, it can't belong to this one because I can't come this way. Because obviously if I come this way from this cage, I would, this, this would in theory be the upper left hand most cell of this cage. So the only way this cage can get to these two squares is if it does something like this. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, which is impossible because that would imply that each of the cages in the grid added to 45, there are 10 cages, um, that's basically, um, that's telling you that there are 10 lots of the digits 1 to 9 in the Sudoku, well there are only 9 lots. Um, so in fact, whatever in this domino is in a cage belongs to that square. Um, now, Hang on, let me think about that. That means one, two, three, four, five. So even if it's this one, which is the closest cell to this cage here, that's still going to require five cells to get to this cell. And it could be this cell we've got to pick up, which would be a minimum of six cells away. So we now know that the minimum cage total for all the cages in this puzzle is 15 because if I if you look at this cage here and I put the minimum numbers into it that would be 15 so so we know that the cage total which applies to all the cages is at least 15 um, and that feels like really good progress which not sure really how to use that though. Um, ah, one thing I can't do, look, is I can't do, I can't in fact draw that shape because if I drew that shape as the cage, let me color it in, I've now got four cells in this column that would have to be in cages. And the minimum I can make four cells add up to with different digits is 10 with one plus two plus three plus four. So this is impossible in fact. So, I don't know what that means really. It just means it can't take both of those two squares. So it could do that. Oh no, it can't do that. That would... No, it can't do that because this cell can't be in this cage. Um, if I could get an upper bound, if I knew, for example, that the cage total couldn't be higher than 20 or something like that that would be really interesting because then i would know that this could only be five cells long as a maximum because the minimum i could make six cells add up to is 21 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 so i don't know there's something going on with this domino i'm not quite sure i understand how to make it work though let's have a look for something else we've got a 28 in this oh i know what i could do you know hang on let's just add up all of the digits on the left hand side so i've got 71 i've got 101 there so 
that means that the 10 cages have to, as a minimum, contain cells adding to 101. Ah, okay, that's nothing. That's no we've already we've already learnt more than that. I was about to say that means that that each cage must must add up to at least 10 or at least 11, I suppose. But we've already worked out it's at least 15 because we know it must be a five-cell cage that gets this one to one of those two squares. But that, um, okay, so each, ah, right, hang on. So each cage is at least, because, because the minimum size of a cage is 15, this cell must have a second cell in this position because it can't have, um, it can't go up, otherwise this would be its upper leftmost cell. It can't go left for the same reason. It can't go down because that's a different cage. So it must take this square. Ah, now hang on. That... Ah, got it. Right. Now I know that this is a five-cell cage because this cage cannot take a cell that is outside the bottom row of the grid because the moment... If we tried to do that, for example, for this cage here, this would be the upper left-hand most cell of, of the cage, not this one. So this can never, this cage here can never take a cell that's outside row 9. And if that's the case, this 20 is providing an upper bound for how big this cage can be. Because if this cage added to 21, this would have to be a 21, and it's not. So that means that this is in fact a five cell cage. Now does that mean it can't ever take this square? I think it does. There's no way you can get that to that orthogonally without it being six cells, is there? That's the most efficient way you can do it and that is definitely six cells. So this square is not in this cage. So this square is our first digit. That is a two because it cannot belong to another cage. It can't belong to that one, otherwise this would be the top left most cell of this cage. It can't belong to that one for the same reason. We've checked that one. This one is the only thing it can belong to. So this is cageless. That too sits alone. I'll make, I'll make cells that are not in cages green. So this is in, this is in the blue cage, which means that's in the blue cage. Right, now, this is really interesting because it's not possible that neither of these cells is blue. Because the only way we could do that is if we connect this to this like that, which would mean this was the upper left hand most cell of the cage. Now that means as one of these two cells is blue, this six clue In fact, in fact, we can go further than this. I was about to say this six clue is made up of this cell, this cell, and one of these two squares. But how can it not be this square? The only way it can't be this square is if I do this, but then I can't connect the fifth cell to this one. So it has to be that one, and therefore it has to be that one. And this cage has suddenly got created. Um, I am the creator, at least in Sudoku. And not really of this puzzle, because that was Joseph, but you know what I mean. I am the creator of that cage. Um, so, we don't know what the cage total is. We know these three squares add up to six, so they're one, two, and three. We know that's a different colour to the whatever this blue one is. The green is not in a cage, so all of those turn green. That square can't be part of a cage, because it can't be part of this one. This is left and what's well, left of this one and at the same rank so it can't be in that one whoopsie um it can't be in that one because it's high this is higher than that one all of the rest of that column turns green because we've got our six in column three this can't extend any f oh i know what i could do this can't extend any further so hang on bear with me uh Bear with me, enable pen tool, come back, pen tool, click on the boundary, there you go, look at that, exciting times, the things that excite me nowadays, good grief, um, 
so this purple look that purple's got to come out here because it can't be it must add to at least 15 um, then yeah well actually that's interesting isn't it because where does it go after that it can't we can't reach a total of 15 in just this domino so it must also take that square as well this one I don't think we know anything about let's just color that in a different color this one Ah, uh, hang on. We know that there's a two in one of those two squares. So there's a two in one of these three squares. And this one, what do we know about that one? We don't know the total for column one. I'm wondering if we can get some sort of count on the 16. This, tw actually, this 20. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. This 20 now is just a two cell cage. Because, well, where's its third cell? It can't go up because this square would always be more upper than this one. So this is a two cell cage. Now that feels incredibly important. That means that the maximum size of a cage now is 17. The maximum I could make those two squares is 8 and 9. Um, so this is either 15, 16 or 17. Which... So there must be more... So whatever this adds up to, there's got to be another cell or cells in row 9 contributed by other cages that could be this one or this one or actually or that one or maybe even that one um, not that one that needs too many cells to get to the bottom row um, okay 10, 20, 30 Hang on, hang on a minute. We've got two. Right, beautiful. That is really beautiful logic. Right, let's consider the fact that in row eight and nine of the grid, there are two cages commencing in those in those rows. So can these cages ever contribute a cell above row eight? Could we ever do that? Never. We couldn't do that because then this would be the upper leftmost cell of this cage and would have would have the dotted line. So these two cages, which we know add to at least 15, have all of their cells in row 8 and row 9. Well, if they were... Let's imagine that these added up to 16 each. Given that they're adding all of their digits would be in row 8 and row 9 they would add to 32 and these two digits should add to 32. They only add to 30. So in fact, I think this is telling us that the cage total for the whole grid, all of the cages add to 15. And that is really, really clever. Um, and it's going to allow me to fill in all of the options for that look, because we now know that's not a two those aren't twos um we now know this is a one two three four five quintuple because that's the only way of making five cells add up to 15. that's not a three look because so there's a three in row three already and we, we're definitely making a little bit of progress so the other thing that's interesting about that is that this red region can never contribute a cell into row eight or row nine because if it did, the, the count for these two rows would have to be higher than 30, which it isn't. So this could be a two cell. Uh, we don't know how far it, it could, in fact, extend all the way here, probably. Um, but it definitely doesn't drop down into row eight. OK. 
Wow. Okay, so what do we now know? I'm now looking at this 10 clue because I've got two purples in column four. So the maximum size that these two purples can have is 10. But 10 plus even three is not enough to get to 15, which we know overall the purple must reach. So the purple, the purple not only takes another cell, but it takes it in column five. Or it could take two cells in column. Could this be another one, two, three, four, five? I don't know. That's interesting. Um, I'm not sure about that. But certainly this purple region has to it has to at least come into one of those two squares. But I don't know. Um, I don't know which one. I don't even think I know that. I think it could be a Z pentomino, couldn't it? If it was one, two, three, four, five, is there anything wrong with that? I'm not sure. Um, oh, Simon. Oh, goodness me. Right. I apologize. I apologize for not looking at this 39 clue <laughs> about 20 minutes ago because. Well, actually, you have to you ha I had to figure out this went this way first, but how on earth? What which cages could these squares belong to? The answer is no cages at all, because each one of these squares is either left or above this cage. So none of these can be in a cage. And therefore, they're all green. And now, how do you make six cells add to 39? Well, only if you make them four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So those three squares have got to be one, two, and three. And that's not three. So... I'm now wondering whether I need to have a sort of generic color to indicate that these two dominoes here are definitely in cages. I think I will do that. I'll make them gray. So gray means something is in a cage, but I don't know what which cage it is. So these all turn green because we know that this this cage is finished. This orange must take another cell at least. Oh, in fact, yeah, okay, all of these turn grey, don't they? Because I know that row four, apart from this two, is fully in, cage, in cages. All of those can turn grey then. Um, now, you can never... This can't belong to a cage. These can't belong to cage. None of these squares can belong to cages. Not sure about those two, because they could belong to this cage. Um, okay, so now we've got to think again. I've got four cells now in column two. So I could take a fifth cell, but I couldn't take six cells. If there were six cells in cages in column two, they would add up to at least 21. So I've got one more cell I can take in this column, which could contribute to this square, this cage, however that grows. But we don't know. It could, it might not even. Uh, I'm just wondering. This square's got to be relatively large because those two add up. Yeah, hang on. These two add up to 15 now. I think when I last looked at this cage, I wasn't sure what it added up to, but now it's 15. So if this square is at least a six, which means these squares have, well, they could be nine. They've got to be nine or less. Um, hmm, okay, don't know what that means. What's the minimum I can make those squares? I could make them one, three, and four, which would be eight. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What am I doing here? I'm adding up to 16, not 15. I'm going crazy. Um, if there's no one, 
i.e. no digit 1, in these three squares. They would be a 3, 4, 5 triple, which would be 12, and I couldn't make this equal to 4. So there's definitely a 1 in this triple, which means there's no 1 in those two squares, which means this is now a 2, 3 pair, which means there's no 3 in these squares anymore, which means this is now 1, 4, 5, which means it adds up to 10, and therefore this square has become a 6. That is gorgeous. Um, and now this is done. That's it. That's it. We've got 16 catered for already in column 2. So those squares turn green. This must extend at least down to here. Because obviously 15 needs a 2 cell total at least. But we don't know whether it comes down further. I don't think. And we can... I'm not sure what else we can do there, but that's that definitely feels like progress again. Two, three pair here. So we've done the 16, we've done the... Si oh, two, three pair means this square's a one, of course, goodness me. Which means that's not a one. There's definitely a one in one of those two squares. There's definitely a one in one of these two squares. This... Does that matter for this region now? Oh, this is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. Now it does matter because I've got the one, two, three triple in column five. Now, now let's think about what, what is the minimum? We know that this, this purple region needs to reach a size of 15. But these two squares can't be greater than 10. So the maximum size of these three squares is 11. That means it needs a 4 at least from some other column. And it has to take a cell from one of these two positions. Or both of them. But look, we've got 1, 2 and 3 in the column already. So the minimum value of this square, for example, is, yes, you've guessed it, 4. So... Hang on, hang on. Can I make these smaller than four then? Uh, hang on. Mm. I'm not sure. I think it is true to say. Maybe that. Oh, it, oh, sorry. I'm getting confused about whether these need to equal 10 or not. I don't think they do. I know both of them are in. I know they can't repeat the one. So these could add up to six. Which would mean I could take a cell from here that was a high cell. Maybe I'm going mad, actually. I think I might be going mad. I'm not sure it is true. It's interesting that four is the minimum digit I can put in these two squares, but I don't think it's enough for me to know what this looks like. If I couldn't put another caged cell in this column, it would be fascinating because then, then that would have to be a 4 and these would have to add up to 10. Or those three would have to add up to 10 and this could be a 4. But, but this would definitely have to... Oh no, maybe that could be the 4. Oh goodness, I think I'm going around in circles here. And is it possible one of these squares is in a cage? It's certainly possible this one is. This one could belong to this square. So, yeah, I think I'm barking up the wrong tree here. Apologies. Um, let's have a look somewhere else. What else could we look at? This 10 clue. We've, we know we've got one cage cell. We know there must be at least two cage cells in column 9 because you can't put 10 into this square. Um, so, I don't know what that means. Three. Ah, right, okay, well, hang on, hang on a moment. Let's have a think about... I'm wondering about the 43 clue again. Because 
I've got to get some quite high digits into row 4. Yeah, here's an interesting thought. There are two cages. That, yeah, there are only two cages that can reach these six cells. So what's the maximum value of those five cells? Well, it must be 29, because I could make that, that domino add to 15, but I would have to put a positive digit in this cell. So I could put one in here and maximize the value of those three squares if this was a cage. So the absolute maximum I can make those three is 14, and the absolute maximum I can make those two is 15, so 29, which means these squares have to add up to at least 16 in order to get to 45 for the row. These four squares here have to be at least 16. They are one and two, so these have to add up to at least 13, which means this is a high digit. Uh, it's eight or nine. Uh, hang on, that's really th thrown a cat amongst the pigeons because now this can't possibly be a nine because if this was a nine, what are we going to put in there to make this column work? It would have to be a second one in this cage. So that's an eight, which means that's a five. This is absolutely unbelievable. So now, now because we worked out these had a minimum value of 13, once this is an eight, you have to make this five because it can't be bigger than five. That just gets you to 13. This is going to do damage. This is going to do damage to the puzzle because now not only do I know, I think I'm going to know more about this shape, but I also know these squares do have to add up to 29. And if that's the case, this shape finishes. It is a two cell shape and there's an eight here. So that's a six, nine pair. This shape, these three squares have to add up to 14 because we need them to contribute 14 to this total which means that square is a one and these squares are all um, the same color. I'll make them red. Um, that means neither of these two squares can now be in any cage. These squares are three, four and seven by Sudoku, which is a good thing because three, four and seven, and here is a knowledge bomb, add up to 14. And 14 add one is 15 and 15 is the magic number in this puzzle. So, we are, now that's not three, and that's not seven. Now, let's come back to this cage, because this cage is now getting very, very difficult. Because, what's this cell? Well, it must be a two, because otherwise we break the ten total. That completes this column's quota of cage cells. I've now got 11 here. I know this square has to at least equal a 4 and it has to therefore be a 4 and it has to be purple and that completes this shape and now we can go back to our go back here look we can we can put x's in to show that we understand what's going on. Um, this shape is finished. Let's put some x's in here. Um, that cell, oh, oh, have I broken it? Oh, no, no, I've broken the puzzle, have I? Or can that, no, that can join to there. Right, okay, let's come back and think about this square. What cage is this square in? Well, I think it's got to be in that one because it can't reach any other square without, without it being the leftmost topmost cell, so it can never join this cage. So these two cells are in the same cage, which means that these three squares are in the same cage, which I shall make yellow. Um, oh, and in fact, this square can't be in this cage because it would be the upper left handmost cell. So there you go, there's another region we're building here. And that square's got that square sees one, two, three, and four. So that's at least a five. And this is really fascinating actually, because look, 
this 1, 2, 3 triple here sees this square as well. So this square is also at least a 5. So those two squares together can't both be 5, so they have a minimum value of 11, which means these two squares have a maximum value of 4, and therefore one of them must be a 1, and this can't be a 1 because there's a 1 in the column. So that square has become a 1. Oh, this is gorgeous. This square now can't be a 3. There's a 3 in its box, so it must be a 2. And this can't be 5, 6, therefore, but must be 5, 7 in order to get us up to 15. And I think that's all. that all felt very, very natural. So that feels like we're on the right track, actually. Um, and in fact, look, that can't be a 7. There's a 7 there. So that's a 5. That's a 7. Um, now, what that means that's a 5 by Sudoku, which means this square is a known quantity. That's a 3. And it's a green 3. And now, now there's a 3 and a 4 in these squares. Look, that's not 3. That's not 4. Um, probably this 28 clue is where we'll look next but I just want to have a quick think about the rest of this so this is not caged these don't seem to be caged we've got an awful lot of so at the moment we've got 10 here this is yeah this is good this is good. I've got 10 in those three squares in cages, and I've got a maximum of three cells, therefore, that have to add up to, to add the other 18. Well, I can't make 18 in two cells in the same row, which means this square is part of this cage, and those two belong together. Actually, that just means I turn this into a grey cell, I think. Um, or maybe that's not as important as I thought it might be, to be honest. But that gives me a bit more Sudoku power. No, not really. Um, okay. So now I, can, ah, now I can work out the value of these squares, though, because I know that the cage cells add up to 28. 28 and 5 is 33. These two squares add up to 12. And they don't, they are not 5 and 7. So this is 4, 8 or 3, 9, which is not resolved, I don't think. Let's put in the options and see if I can just see which way round this goes. So that's either 3, 9 or 4, 8. don't know right okay but we know that we can't now put three and four in those squares so that square's got to be a three or a four by sudoku which is gorgeous because now we can extend our purple shape down because you can't make two cells add to 15 if one of them is a three or a four so that square becomes oh this is lovely it fixes the one so can this square be a one in the purple now oh no hang on it could be a 1 if it takes that square. Oh, that's nonsense. That's absolute nonsense. So, it can't be a 1. This square can't be a 1 if this shape can't go to here. Now, can I avoid the shape going down to there? I don't know, actually don't think I can. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. Yeah, no, I've just just got confused there. I need to do something else. So, where should we look now? We shall look at, we've done the 16, we've done the 6, we've done the 10, we've done the 39-ish. Ah, maybe this one. So we haven't done the 10 yet. But we have found two cells in the column that have to be that have to be in cages. I actually feel I feel like I'm running out of clues to use here. Ah, no, I'm not. Twenty. I've got fifteen at the moment. What's that square? That square is caged, and it can't be one, two, three, or four. 
So it's five because otherwise we've, uh, we've got more than 20 cells in this row. So those squares are all green. Now this shape has to take at least this square, doesn't it? Because, yeah, I mean, you can't, it's got to take this square. It might have to take more squares because it needs, we, we need whatever is in this row to add up to 10. Oh, oh, this is, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. Now, because whatever is in this row in this shape has to add up to 10, not because of this 10, but in order to get the shape to add up to 15 because it's only got five in it so far and it can only take cells from this row to get up to its quota. So whatever is in this shape is going to be the entirety of this 10 clue, which means this clue cannot contribute. Now, why do I think that matter? That Why does that matter? Well, that's locked this shape to be three cells big, which means this square definitely now can't be a one, uh, which means that square is a one, I suppose, which... No, it doesn't do that. It does. It means one is in one of two places in box seven, box eight, I should say. Uh, I'm not sure about box nine. Uh, okay. And now, now I'm not sure. Also, what we do with the. Oh, look, that sees one now. So this square is known to be a two. Doesn't seem to do anything, but it would be good if I can tidy up more of the puzzle with just straight Sudoku, I suppose. Um, now, do we know what this is? I know that this... Do I know how big this one is? I don't think so. In fact, I'm getting very, I feel like we've used up almost all of the information. Do I know what these are? I don't think I do. I Ah, one, look, one has to be in one of those two squares. So this box needs ones, sixes, eights and nines. One's six, six look, there's no six here, so there must be a six in this shape. But it could still be, I think it could be six, nine, couldn't it? And just occupy these two squares. And in fact, that's almost likely because then this could be a six and that would be a four. And that would give us our 10 quota. But this is just conjecture, I'm not sure about this. Um, Okay, so we're going to have to, I think we've got to do more thinking here. I'm not sure how, <laughs> I'm not sure where to look, to be honest. Um, apologies if you're seeing exactly where it is I'm meant to focus my attention here. It's unclear to me. Let's just leave it like that. It's probably going to be some Sudoku we can do. Seven has to be in one of those three squares. Let's do that. Is that going to tell tell me the price of butter? Uh, no, this one is giving me a four here and a one here. That's ah, okay. All of that gets figured out. I don't think that's going to be terribly useful though because we know so little about the top of the grid. Three, seven, seven is now locked over to these three squares. No. What am I missing? We've done, we've done the 43, we've done the 28. Oh, I tell you, I say I've done the 28, but I can get a handle on how big these squares are, can't I? Because I know how big this square is. So let's try and do that. I've got 10 here. Uh, which means these three add up to 18. So this is either 15 or it's 14. And if it's 14, it would have to have a one. It couldn't take these ones, so it would have to have a one down there, which would be very interesting. Um, so this is either 
14 or 15. If it's 15, it would have to be 9, 6. Because it couldn't be 8, 7. Because the 7's up here. And if it's 14, it would have to be 6, 8. Which is, I don't think I've said anything there that's even remotely intelligent. Um, so depending on what this is, depends on whether this has to take another cell or not. So, okay, I'm not sure about that, I'm afraid. Um, but I suppose one thing we can say is this can only take one more cell. So it can never reach these squares. This is a 10. We know these are adding up to 10 without using one. So they could take three squares. So these squares can turn green. That feels like the most minor deduction. Maybe it's not though. Maybe this is something to do with this 10 clue. Yeah, let's think about this square actually. Because this square... This square cannot be 9 because it's going to have to be added to this square. Yes, this is lovely. This square is a six, of course, isn't it? That's what I should have thought about because, because I have to add these two squares at least together in order to, uh, because they're definitely caged, this square can never be a nine because if it's a nine, nine plus three is 12 and this would be a 12 clue. Now it can't be seven and eight by Sudoku. If it's less than six, let's try and make it, well, it can't be five, you can see that. So it would have to be a four or something like that. But if it's a four, we can't make those three squares add up to 18, which we know they need to. So this only option for that square is six, look. Which means I think this square is now eight or nine. And this is either a two cell sum to 15. Or it's a three cell sum and it needs a one. So this square now, if, the, if we knew what this square was, we would know what was going on with the, uh, this column. Uh, sorry, I think I'm being very, very slow about this part of the puzzle. Um, hmm. Okay. So we now know there's a six up there. Do we know anything more useful than that? That is the question. Oh, good grief. Oh, good grief. Right. Look at column one and ask the question, where do three and four go in the column? So there's a three and a four here. Well, he can't go in those squares. So the only cells they can go into are the purple ones. So if these have got a three, four pair in them, three and four add to seven. So the other square has got to be an eight. So this is a three, four, eight triple, which is probably important, I would think. Um... Yes, it is important. Look at those three squares now. Well, in fact, there's all sorts going on. Firstly, this square can't be six or seven. So these two squares look like they have to be a six, seven pair. So let's put that in. Secondly, this is now a three, four, eight triple. So that can't be a four and has to be a nine. Once this is a nine, that becomes an eight. Once this is an eight, we now got a one, nine pair in box six. We've got an eight here by Sudoku. We've got a three here by Sudoku. We've got a four and a three. Um, and we need five, six, and seven into the top of box one. We need eight and nine into those squares, which we can do using the nine we've got down here. Let's fix that. That's an eight now. Um, and we can can put three into one of those squares by Sudoku. We uh, now we'd need a one. Look, there must ah 
yeah, okay, we need need a 1 to complete this 14 cage and make it 15. The 1's got to be in one of those squares, so that means we get a 1 here and a 3 here. Now we know 3 is in one of two places in box 9. We know, uh, no, we don't know much about 1's. Um, okay. What does this mean? <laughs> it means that... I don't know what it means. Maybe we can do something here. Oh yeah, look, eight. There's a two eight pair now in box seven. That's great because that means there must be a seven in this those three squares. So this is a seven. That must be a six. And now we need four, five and seven to complete this column. That's not five. Right, lovely. Let's look at this eight. Because it gives us an eight here by Sudoku, but it also locks an eight into one of those two squares. And look, we've now found the two eights that exist in a correct solution. How many eights are there in a correct solution to this puzzle? in row seven, one. How many are there in row eight? One. We know that those two eights occupy those two dominoes. So there are no eights over, over here, or there would be a third eight in these two rows. So that gives us an eight here, that gives us a three. Lovely, that gives us a oh, lovely four, seven, three will go in. Seven is in one of these two squares now. Um, Okay, that felt like good progress. This four, has that done anything for us? Maybe not. We still don't know how this resolves. Oh, we do, no we do. Yes, look at this. Getting this three gave me a four here, which, which now means I've got two cage cells in column nine, which add to 10. I can't have a third. So this cannot be a caged cell. Now, if that can't be a caged cell, and this can't be a caged cell, obviously, how is this getting its last digit? It must be here, and it must be a one, and that fixes the one and the nine. The setting in this puzzle is stunning. Um, now, does that mean, I feel like I should reward this region with a better color than gray. So we shall give it the color Hmm. Maybe blue? Yeah, blue. Um, and okay, so now I've done I've done the 10, I've done the 39, I've done the 10, I've done the 6, I've done the 16, I've done the 43, I've done the 28. I have not, well I've sort of done this 10, I know it belongs to this shape. And I've not done this one at all. Does this come to this square is the question. Let's have a look down this column. We need sixes, eights, and nines into these squares. We really don't seem to know. This can't be a nine, because if that was a nine, this would have to be a one in order to keep the shape to the right size. So that's definitely not a nine. Now, if it's an eight, with this square would have to be a two, which looks possible. Oh, no, 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 that's gorgeous. This is not eight. Because if this is eight, that's two, and this square has no value. So this is six, which is lovely. Okay, that fixes all of those. Now, do we know what this square is? I'm still not sure we do. It could be a four. But if it's not a four, these two square, ah, no, here we go. Yeah, it is a four, because you can't add these two squares together to make four, because the one and the three are not available. So that is four. And that finishes this shape. But this one we don't know about now. <laughs> now what can this be? Let's actually look at the options. 2, 7 and 9. Oh, it can't be 9. Because that would be 17 immediately. 7 looks very nice. Because that would give us a 15. If this is a 2. We're going to run into. Big problems. Because, yeah, if this is a 2. We now need to get two more cells or one more cell that add to five. We can't have one more cell adding to five. The five will clash. 
How can we make those two squares add to 5? You can't use 2, 3 or 1, 4. You can't do it. This square is a 7. That's a 7, therefore. This is finished. These two both turn green. And hopefully, we might be able to finish the puzzle just using our old friend Sudoku. 2s and 9s go in. 9s are up here somewhere along with what's what's the other digit that's missing? 5. Oh, 5 and 9. Okay, fair enough. 4, 6 and, uh, four, six and 7. That's not 7. Uh, that's just 6 by Sudoku. That's not 6 anymore. This 7 is now nice. Look, that gives me a 5 here, 5 here, 9 here. Six sevens, four sevens. Um, that's not four. That's not seven. This square has to be a four or a seven by Sudoku, and it can't be seven, so it must be four. Seven, five, four all go in. Five can only go here by Sudoku. That's a five, that's a two. This column needs a nine. The 8 and the 2 are fixed by this 8 here. This square's got to be a 6. And if I've not made a mistake, that square should be a 2. This column... Oh, I thought I made a mistake there, but I don't think I have. This column needs a 6. So that can be a 6. The 6 and the 7, the 7 and the 4. The 4 goes here. And that is a 9. And there we go. I think that is the correct solution. This square should be coloured in green. Let's click tick. Yes, that's a fabulous puzzle. There is so much, so much different logic in there. You have to use loads and loads of little tricks and the, the sort of sequencing is quite beautiful. The idea of this 43 even to start and getting a cage to reach it is a lovely, it's just a lovely pattern. The whole thing is, is a joy. Um, it's quite a long video as well, but I did my best, I promise. Let me know in the comments how you got on and do try and help Marge out. This is the last day. Thanks so much for watching. Back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.